The most controversial bachelor in history continues his journey to find love. Hello my lovely friends and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Joanna but you can call me Jo. As you can see from the title, I'm going to be picking my next read based only on the first line and the last line. I've picked out a few books that I'm really looking forward to reading and hopefully by the end of this video I will have my next read picked out. The month of March has been abysmal. I've kind of ended up in a bit of a rut because the first book I read I did not enjoy and I forced myself to finish it, which looking back now, maybe I shouldn't have. I'm what? not enjoying it. I'm not. But what I really want from this video is to get myself excited for my next read. So hopefully that will happen. I won't let myself get into a reading slump. No, I will not. Please enjoy. The first book I picked out was Free Women. Wow. Okay then. When my mother was a young woman, a man used to follow her to work every morning and masturbate in step behind her. Wow. That's a very strong first line. And the last line is, they are blood and bone and love and pain, birth and death, everything at once, and that at last is life. Wow, this is a really strong contender to be the first book I picked up. Uh. Pfft. This one really has taken me by surprise. I knew it was going to be interesting, but I wasn't expecting that. So this is definitely going on the yes pile and it might be the one I go for, but I've literally just started to so let me, let me pump the brakes. Why don't you have a piece of bread and maybe you'll calm down a little. Next up is second hardback and that is The Silence of the Girls. Great Achilles. Brilliant Achilles. Shining Achilles. Godlike Achilles. Talented, brilliant, incredible, amazing, show-stopping, spectacular. I guess we really know who the war surrounded her. Huh? And then the last line, oh my god, I have to be careful not to say anything else. <laughs> Once, not so long ago, I tried to walk out of Achilles' story and failed. Now my own story can begin. Okay, feminism. <laughs> that, my friends, is how you know you're reading a contemporary feminist retelling of a Greek mythology. <laughs> It always goes something along those lines of his story, her story. Despite the fact that I am making fun of it, I do think that is quite a powerful way to end your book. So this is also a yes. We have Alias Grace by Margaret Atwood. This is a really short first line. <coughs> Out of the gravel, there are peonies growing. Nice, simple, flowery imagery. Okay, another really short line to end up the story. And so we will all be together. To be honest, neither of these lines really give me much at all. Like, I really don't know what's going on in this book. That does, however, amp up my curiosity. So I think I'm going to put that in the maybe pile. Just right down the middle. Next up, we have the long and the short of it. This could be perfect to get me out of the reading slump because it's a book of short stories. Okay, so I was in trouble again. No surprise there. It's my default state. Okay, troublemaker. Ooh, interesting. Okay, so this book ends in dialogue, which I don't see very often. So, here we go. But not as important or as welcome as the sight of you and Dr. Peterson laughing together again. Thank you, Dr. Maxwell. That will be all. Who's Dr. Maxwell? So intrigued. This is going in the yes pile. Next up, we have little fires everywhere. Oh god, this is a long one. <laughs> Not me trying to get undressed on camera, girl. It's not only fans, it's YouTube. Boo, you whore. Everyone in Shaker Heights was talking about it that summer, how Isabel, the last of the Richardson children, had finally gone round the bend and burned the house down. Okay, arson. Fun. She would spend months, years, the rest of her life looking for her daughter searching the face of every young woman she met for as long as it took, searching for a spark of familiarity in the faces of strangers. It sounds good, but I don't know if it's the right thing for me to read right now, so I'm gonna put it in the maybe pile. Next up, we have The Island of Missing Trees. The first line goes, it was the first lesson of the year at Brook Hill Secondary School in North London. It's probably boiling in that classroom. We all know London heat is not the one. It's disgusting. <laughs> it's the humidity! Wait. <gasps> this is a whole paragraph. Oh, don't be so dramatic. I'm just gonna monologue it. 
But I know and trust that any moment now my beloved Costas will come out to the garden with a spade in his hand, perhaps wearing his old navy parker again, the one we bought together from a vintage shop on Portobello Road, and he will dig me out and pull me up, holding me gently in his arms, and behind his beautiful eyes, engraved in his soul, they will still be there, the remnants of an island at the far end of the Mediterranean Sea, the remains of our love. I love that. That was right here. I think this is gonna go in the yes pile. The next one, oh my god! Ah! The next book I decided to pick up was One of Us is Lying. I picked this up because I'm assuming it's going to be quite YA, and with that I'm assuming it will be sort of a bit more simple and comprehensive to read. I won't have to put my brain on too much. A few moments later. Oh, fucking hell. A sex tape, a pregnancy scare, two cheating scandals, and that's just this week's update. <laughs> what on earth is going on in the House of Commons? Okay. <laughs> Strong start. <laughs> a bit much. Y'all are going to jail! Period! I catch his reflection in the back seat window, and he can't either. Okay, so clearly I'm missing a vital piece of information in that last line. I think that's a no. I'm afraid it won't be stimulating enough to keep me reading, and since I'm trying to get out of a reading slump, I need something engaging. So. The very last book I picked up for this video is The Goldfinch. I'm really excited to read this, and I know you're probably looking at the length of the book and being like, that's not going to be helpful in a reading slump. As intimidating as they are, I do sometimes think that they captivate me more than shorter books, because they have to keep the reader engaged. So I think this could be a good way to get out of it, it just forces you to read and persevere. While I was in Amsterdam, I dreamed about my mother for the first time in years. Interesting. Why Amsterdam? Was he smoking? Chris! Is that a weed? No, this is a crayon. I'm calling the police! 911, what's your emergency? So we have another long closing line here, and action! And I add my own love to the history of people who have loved beautiful things, and looked out for them, and pulled them from the fire, and sought them when they were lost, and tried to preserve them, and save them, whilst passing them along literally from hand to hand, singing out brilliantly from the wreck of time to the next generation of lovers, and the next. Ooh! That's so intriguing, because now I want to know who is their mother, or what's happened to her, and what's the thing they're trying to preserve and they love so much. That's gonna go in the yes pile. Now that I've sorted through the books, let's have a look at my yes pile and see if any of these really stick out to me. The Goldfinch is a definite yes. The Island of Missing Trees was definitely a yes, but I think now that I've read all of the lines, it might not live up to the sense of mystery the other books provide. The long and short of it was interesting, and like I said, I think it might be good for the reading slump, so this is a yes. The Silence of the Girls was also good. I think this is a no for now. Lastly, we have Free Women. I think this book had the first line that really shocked me the most, so that is a yes. So here are the three books that I'm considering. Because I'm so indecisive, I just decided to take it out of my hands and put it in the hands of a random generator wheel. I don't think you can even fucking see that. But the long and short of it won. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to this. I really don't think I've ever gone out of my way to read a collection of short stories, so I'm excited. I feel like a brand new woman. It's about history and time travel, so I think hopefully that will be quite immersive. However, I think once I'm done with this book, I'm definitely giving The Goldfinch a try because I'm really, really intrigued by that. But I think at this moment in time, despite what I said, a long book might not be exactly what I'm needing. I think a short story book will hopefully hit the spot. Can't wait. Woo! We did it! Thank you ever so much for watching this video and for joining me on the journey of picking my next read. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you're having a wonderful day. Please leave a like if you enjoyed this video, subscribe if you want, and... Oh! <laughs> and ring the bell for notifications of when I next post. I will of course let you know how the long and short of it goes. 
Thank you. Bye. Mwah.